What's up, guys? It's Callus. I'm going to live narrate this one, and I'm coming in, unfortunately, on the fourth turn. So a couple of these turns have already played out, and we're going to see how it goes. It's Jirachi and Johnny G2, live action, round two winner's bracket. Uh, it was a lead scarm for Rachi, who did establish some spikes there, and then Magneton picked it off. That's where we are. This is the correct turn in real time, turn five. And Jirachi has shown a Claydol and Regice in the back, which is not what I would expect with a lead Skarm. Whereas Johnny has a Mag and his own Skarm. So it's going to get interesting. Now that we're caught up and I have a moment to breathe, since like I said, we did miss those first couple of turns. And we can just go start from the beginning once again, so you guys get to see it one more time. Skarm on Mens, immediate Mag, Spike, Thunderbolt that doesn't kill him, Spike number two. T-Bolt, Sturdy Skarm LOL, here, Toxic, and T-Bolt. And this is where we left off. So hopefully everyone understands how we got here. Let's continue with the game. Magneton switching into Regice. It is a Bolt Beam Resist, even though its base HP and general bulk is pretty crappy. And this is where we are in real time. Johnny's team, if it is some kind of physical offense, it might be awkward to switch into Regice. Uh, generally, everything has something to fear. Obviously, Mens doesn't want to take an Ice Beam. Things like Snorlax or Metagross don't love Thunder Wave, for example. If he had something like a Flygon or some other physical sweeper, that also might not want to come in on Ice Beam. It might be an awkward Mon for him, but... To be very clear, Magneton did its job in taking out the Skarm, so if you can get any value at all, if you can resist Bolt Beam and, you know, land a Thunderbolt or a Status or something on the other side, then I think you did just fine. Gengar comes in for Rachi, trying to protect those spikes, which, not clear if Johnny has a spinner or not, hasn't shown one. He does have Magneton as his spikes answer, but... He may also, it could just be a Magdal team or something to that effect, he may also have a spinner in the back. But Gengar is there to try to impede that effort. I'm not sure what Johnny's team is. I guess it's some kind of some kind of mag balance that that happens to be using Skarm, which, which is fine. But as it is, this team usually has, has to give something. It, it's tough on its spots. you got to give up something, so... Certainly, if you're cramming Skarm in there, you really have to give up something. I don't know if that means that he's playing without a natural Curemon, or he's cheating on Rock Resists, or what, but something is not going to be there. Milo goes for Surf. Interesting. I get why the Coon comes in. It's one of the ideal things to set up on. You could substitute for free in its face. If you're Crow Coon, you can get a couple Calm Minds off, not give a shit about Toxic, get the rest down, and get that going. Quite a few things that you could do here. But they're both thinking about it. This is the beauty of live. You get to see them play at their own pace. And there is a Blissey in the back. So last, obviously, for Johnny has to be a Rock Resist. So we're looking at very limited things here. There's Metarachi, Flygon, Swampert, Claydol. And that that's pretty much it. And some of those certainly make more sense than others. And if it were something like Metagross, you would really be you would really be cheating. It's not exactly a full wall for, you know, something like a DD Tar or what have you. So I think whatever it is, same thing, like Jirachi is not really gonna stop the things that are spamming rock attacks, such as a DD Tar, so whatever it is probably has to be a little bit closer to a proper rock resist. And there's a big full para there. Can he get another? Yep, that's why we saw lame my bad from Johnny. Those are two bad full pairs in a row for Rachi. I mean, you got to take those, obviously, but very relevant there. Kuhn, if it gets rest off, is good to go. And Kuhn looks really threatening in this matchup, by the way. Kuhn against Milo and Blissey is a real issue, especially if it's Crow Kuhn. And you have to risk when you go the Skarm to try to phase him out. You just get nailed with a plus whatever Surf. Or same thing, if your play is to like get him with Magneton while he sleeps, you just die to the Surf if he's Crocoon. 
So definitely relevant hacks there for Johnny. And Johnny looks good in this game. He's flat out up a poke, and then he got bailed out by double para there. It's looking solid. For Jirachi, this is actually, this is one of those, like, UD-esque offensive teams. Linear used to play these. I like these squads. I think they're really good in the meta in the meta game right now. And uh, I think, speaking of meta, I think that might be the last poke for Jirachi, or something to that effect. Magneton into Doll is interesting. Not sure. That must have been... That must have been a prediction gone wrong, but he gets himself earthquaked and Magneton is no longer with us. So we've got ourselves a 5 to 5 situation with an unrevealed in the back for both. Has to be a rock resist for Johnny and doesn't have to be for Jirachi, but I think it is probably, like I said, a meta gross specifically, but some kind of rock resist. And yeah, there is showdown still. At this point, over a year later, having not fixed that stupid double switch visual glitch in which, as you see here, Salamence is so fast, it comes in twice in one turn. Good stuff. And, as anticipated, <clears throat> it is the Metagross in the back for Jirachi. Comes in on Hidden Power, which that would have done even less if it were Grass. So we know that it's flying. Plus, mixed doesn't make a ton of sense here since you are. Since you do have a magneton. Apparently, magneton led. Oh, this is so bad. I'm refreshing. Sorry, guys. It just. This glitch is, is dumb. There we go. Let's get things back to normal. And all we missed there was a meteor mash as Skarm comes in. And there is an attack raise along with it. Rock slide there, going for a little flinch action. My logic has to come in on those two layers of spikes that Johnny does not seem able to remove, so meta's a real threat here. Earthquake would do a lot. Hey, you could fish for another raise with Meteor Mash. Earthquake just kills. Jirachi, even though he got really unlucky with that coon, still looks decent in this game, and that's got to be a big confidence booster for Jirachi. If the coon gets like really haxed, which was a big threat anyway, but then he still wins, that would be, yeah, there's a crit at a great time for Rachi. He looks good. Johnny on the ropes here. Meta seems like a real issue. Yeah, he's going to go to Mence now, which is not going to like plus one meteor mashes. So I don't know if we're going to try to dodge a mash or if we're going to try to crit an earthquake here, but... Johnny's going to need some amount of luck here, or he's just going to lose to the meta, apparently. Little bit of hesitation. And he doubles back. Wow, what a conservative play for Jirachi. I don't know if I like that or not. I, I certainly applaud more discipline than I could ever have. I click Meteor Match there all day, like the greedy son of a bitch that I am, but... He pulls it back. He knows that the meta can just set up and just win later. He makes the conservative play, pulls it back, blows in the nurse's face. Ugh. Blissey, I've been waiting for so long. Ugh. 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 Oh, it feels so good. Unloads. On the nurse's face. And as it turns out, the last poke for both players was Metagross. Johnny cheating a little bit, like I said, on physical resistance. It's not too bad. Skarm plus Milo plus Meta is good enough in, like, most matchups. But there are scenarios there where... Th there are scenarios where a dedicated physical team or, like... A serious rock spam with, like, Cloyster or whatever Spiker plus Arrow and Titar can still overrun that, especially if there's a mag on the other side to remove the Skarm or to assist in removing the non-agility Metagross, which it totally could be agility here, by the way, but just generally speaking. Johnny's going to need to get there with the meta to win, and he could. If it's agility meta... Utility here, you lum away status, you 
Well, he doesn't even. He, he's got lefties, not lumps. So I guess Gengar is a real issue here. It might be non-Wisp Gengar. They don't always have Wisp. And also, as you know, Wisp can just miss with the 75-25. But Wisp is a difficult move here. Johnny, I don't think, can really play around it. Even if it is Wisp on the other end, I think the play from Johnny simply has to be click agility, skillfully dodge the Willow Wisp, get him with mash, preferably with a critter and attack raise or whatever, and then just clean up with meta. Meta can one-hit KO the Reg Ice. Meta can certainly kill the Paralyzed Low Coon. It could just come down to meta on meta. He might not have Will-O-Wisp. He fire punches there. But it's anticlimactic because Jirachi, even though he doesn't have Will-O-Wisp, Johnny doesn't seem to have agility, and he would have needed it there. The miss is going to pretty much seal his fate. He's saying GG, but it might be premature. That last fire punch did 46%. And he's at 50. He's not guaranteed to kill with a fire punch here. I wouldn't GG just yet. Not at all. Johnny could survive here, kill him with Meteor Mash, get an attack raise. He would outspeed and one-hit KO the Reg Ice. He would certainly kill the Coon when it's paralyzed. You just outspeed it and click Earthquake. And then, yeah, then you just have to crit the Metagross on the other side. Stranger things have absolutely happened here. You've got to mash again if you're Johnny here. You need the attack raise. That's wrong. Earthquake is incorrect there. You have to mash. You need an attack raise to win. And it's actually agility meta from Jirachi here. I don't think this late game has been played perfectly. I, J Johnny could just be trying to get there with crits, but I think without the raise, even a crit earthquake on the meta on the other side is not guaranteed to kill, depending on the EVs and what kind of meta it is. We now know that it's a Jilla meta, so maybe it isn't the bulkiest or doesn't have protect or whatever, but we hadn't known that previously. Interesting late game. I'm surprised that there was a GG from Johnny. It felt too early. Here's GG again. Might be over this time. And by might, I mean 100%. But the first GG was premature. All right, that was an interesting one. There were a lot of hacks in that game both ways, but Jirachi's got to feel good about that one. He's apologizing about the luck, but I don't know. Easy to forget, or maybe he's just being polite, but there was certainly some bad luck the other way as well. Like I said, the Coon was a big threat for Jirachi, and Johnny only dealt with it because of the double para. Didn't feel like that game was determined solely by luck or like Jirachi hacks the crap out of Johnny to get this win. That's certainly not the way that I view this game. But that was only game one. We are waiting on game two and potentially game three. The beauty of live is they could play in 10 seconds or they could play in 10 minutes. Isn't that fun? And we wait. I have no clue what either of these guys. I'm not involved in any way in either of these guys' prep. I have no clue what either one is going to bring. These are two of the more versatile players, so unlike, you know, Kurtz or Arctic or, you know, Umbri or whatever, where I could take an educated guess because there's only so many teams that they play, I think that, I think either of these guys could roll up with just about anything, and I, I don't really, there's no point in me issuing a prediction as to what I think either guy is going to bring. But an interesting thing to note and I don't have the usage, the usage statistics pulled up right in front of me. But Regice has some, like, absurd win rate right now. It's like 10 out of 11 or 11 out of 12 or something bananas. The thing just keeps fucking winning. And we've got ourselves game two. We're going to keep the players in the positions they were in before. So it's Jirachi on the bottom, Johnny G2 on the top. As you guys just saw, Rachi with a 1-0 lead. And they're both going to lead with good old Titar. And they're both going to think about it. This is such a weird matchup. T Titar on Titar, which is like very standard and common, of course. There's actually a lot that goes into this here. You have to consider choice ban from either one. You have to consider non-choice banded brick break. You have to consider that either one could switch to Skarm. You have to consider that either one could switch to a bulky water. You have to consider that one of them switches to Zap, playing around things like brick break or fire blast. 
it, there's a lot of mind game stuff, and there is no definitive correct play. Not only should you be switching it up to keep your opponents on your toes and not be scoutable, but depending on the rest of your team, the correct play can very much vary. Uh, know what's a really good play, though, in this matchup? When you have a choice band brick break and you insta-kill the other guy's T-Tar on turn one. That is the ideal scenario. It's obviously not that exciting. Had Jirachi switched to Skarm or Zapdos or whatever, but he stayed in and will never know what it is that he wanted to do. He is insta-erased by the CB brick break. So a great start for Johnny in this game one. A spike did get down against him, but I think Johnny's okay with that. I think he can live with the position that he's in. Skarm comes back now, and it eats a fire punch. This actually might be some kind of CM spam for Johnny, believe it or not. doesn't have to be, but I, I just have a little inkling, given what's been shown so far. Fire punch is going to get a burn. That helps, so really off to a good start, Mr. Johnny G2. And Jirachi seems very much on the defensive. And if it's one of those teams where he's opting for Celebi as his special wall rather than Blissey, which I'm not saying is bad or wrong or whatever, it's the right play on certain teams. Uh, but if that's what we're looking at here versus what might be a CM spam for Johnny, then Jirachi might be in for a bad day. Celebi can get overrun pretty quickly if there's three Calm Minders or what have you on Johnny's squad. Beach Seed and Body Slam. And a little bit of a pause. Now to Jirachi's credit, because he's not getting utterly donked here. He's got two layers of spikes down. He's got the Healthy B. He's got the Leech Seed action going. So it's a, it's a close game right now. It's not clearly one of them miles and miles above the other. Hidden Power and Fire Punch. Sure. Interesting that Johnny's staying in. I wonder if he's got a Dug Trio in the back. If it is if it is CM spam, then they always have Dug, and it just makes perfect sense. He'll totally go back and forth with this with this Celebi. Why not? Who cares? There's the Dug trying to come in on HP Fire. Yep. Good play for Johnny. Jirachi did not sniff out that Dug, and goodbye, Celebi. Come on. Come on, Rachi. If I know that there's a dog in the back, if I sense it, you gotta sense it, you fucking noob cakes. But yeah, not going for Giga Drain there, or Recover, or Switching it is a rough break. HP Fire there is like only the right play if you think he stays in with Jirachi, which is not even that exciting, because even then, if he had a Duck Trail follow-up, he would still die. I don't think HP Fire is right there. I think there's not a lot of upside. And I think Jirachi gets punished for his mistake. It does look like something to the effect of a CM spam. I mean, or it's just, you know, whatever. Kuhn meta, Kuhn doll, something like that in the back. Again, a linear-esque special-ish offense for Johnny. And Rachi thinking over what to do. This game is not lost for him. He's got some low stuff on the other side. The Duck Trio's not in great shape. The Jirachi's not in great shape. There are two layers of spikes down. Certainly, if Jirachi has something like an Aerodactyl in the back, that could be a real menace for Johnny. It's not over. But Jirachi knows that he's behind. So he goes to Skarm. Are we going to set a third layer here? Does not seem like Johnny would have a spinner here. He could have a doll, but he probably doesn't have a spinner. But he could have a doll. And still, even after going Skyrim, there's a bit of a pause here. I'm not sure. It'll show us in a sec which player we're waiting for here. Is, is Jirachi debating between layer number three versus simply clicking Roar here? Which is a fair question. Zapdos comes in, so that'll that'll all but confirm that there's that there's not a clay at all here. It's just gonna be it's gonna be like last coon probably. And there's layer number three. Zapdos should scare away the Skarm here. Oh, interesting. I thought if he was gonna stay, he was gonna roar there. I thought. 
you would stay to prevent like a substitute or something, but I'm not sure what he was anticipating there. I guess he thought he was going to BP to something and he just wanted to drill pack it. It's a weird drill pack. But yeah, he drill packs into an agility, which is real awkward. That's obviously not what he was going for. And certainly this one looks pretty fucked at this point. Johnny, very, very likely sending us to game three. I don't know what that drill pack was anticipating. Like I said, I don't mind the stay, which takes balls to do. But if you're gonna stay, you've gotta you gotta roar there. Man, with a critter in EQ he could have gotten him there, but fast Rachi now is gonna get a, a chance to burn the Metagross. However, he's not going to be able to kill him with Fire Punch, even with a crit. So the only thing that he really has to worry about is the burn. There's Doug. That'll certainly be able to get him from 72%. Well, Protect will make it interesting. And Protect is also almost exclusively on bulky grows. So yeah, he can, he can survive that, just barely. However, nothing preventing Zapdos or Gengar in this case from coming in, clicking whatever attack, probably Thunderbolt. And that'll end the day for meta. So this, this, there's a shot here. Yeah, Aerodactyl in the back is ideal, especially if the last poke isn't a rock resist. If it is last poke Kuhn, there actually is a shot here for Jirachi. The Kuhn would have to come in in three layers of spikes. You've got a chance to just flinch or crit him down with rock slide. Now, granted, if you don't crit or flinch him, the Kuhn just surfs you or hydros you or whatever, and you just die. So, like, you got to get there, but... We've seen so many times over the years on the channel where there's an Aerodactyl, there's a way, and indeed, Aerodactyl probably the ideal thing for Jirachi to have in this situation. Whether it's enough to bail him out of this game or not, unclear, but this is the Mon that he wants to have, and there's the first Rock Slide, and there's the second. T-Tar's gone. Aww. Man. I mean, that makes sense, right? I, I get why it's Swampert there, but it makes it less interesting. Had it just been Kuhn, it's unclear how this game plays out. Swampert should beat the Aerodactyl here. It's still possible for Johnny, or Jirachi rather. If he chips the Pert with the Starmie and then just gets there, I guess you can't even just get there with Double Edge anymore because of the Gengar. Yeah, it's tough. This game is going to end up closer than... Than it had looked like. It looked for a while like Johnny was going to 5-0 or 6-0 him. But ends up closer than that. But I still nevertheless think we are going to a game three. There's a shot. Man, if he had frozen the guy there, shit gets interesting. Shit gets real. One more chance to critter freeze. Doesn't get there, and that should do it, because there's no move here that you can click that's going to be good against all of them. HP Flying is going to be resisted by Zapdos. Rock Slide is going to be resisted by Swampert. Double Edge, the Gengar is, of course, immune. So there just is no neutral move that hits all three, and we're effectively guaranteed to go to a Game 3 at this point. He played it right, though. Jirachi gave himself two opportunities to crit or freeze the Gengar there. And had either of those occurred, the crit or the freeze, then Jirachi would simply take this 2-0, and that would be that. But without those things occurring, Hydro Pump does connect through the Rock Slide, and Johnny is, in fact, as expected, even though it ended up way closer than I thought that it was going to, Johnny is, in fact, going to send us to a Game 3. Sue... So, one of these players is going to be 2-0 in the winner's bracket and have round three off. The winners have that luxury of chilling for a week while the lower bracket guys fight it out and knock each other out. And one of them is going to go down to 1-1 one and, one and have to fight in that very difficult lower bracket. Round two is such an important round when you're in the winner's bracket to get the win. Starting out 2-0 is such a big advantage because of that buy. Haven't done the math on it, but your chances of winning the tournament must go up exponentially if you start out 2-0 rather than 
It's just such a big difference. The buy is so good. It really sets you up for success. All right. Well, while we wait, let's take a look at the teams. Neither one has really brought anything too, too stally up to this point. It's been, I mean, everybody labels teams differently. I get yelled at all the time and I say, so-and-so plays stall. And they go, oh, that's not stall. It's, it's balance or vice versa. I go, oh, that's, that's an, that's an offensive team. Oh, it's got Blissey. It can't be an offensive team. I mean, everyone labels things differently, but from my point of view, this is like, an offensive leaning balance. Uh, this is a a balance, maybe a defensive leaning balance. I would call this a balance, and I would call this a balance. I mean, it, call me lame, call me too too narrow, but or too broad rather. But I, I think basically all four teams have been somewhere in the vicinity. Of a balance. Maybe some of them lean a little more aggro. Some of them lean a little more defensive. But neither one has brought what I would label as hyper offense or full proper stall. And I'm not sure where that leaves us for game three. I doubt anything that's happened so far has caused either one to like reevaluate and go, eh, maybe I should bring something else in game three. Like... If there had been, you know, two games up to this point where, like, in both games, Gyarados just sweeps the crap out of the other guy, then that might get in my head and go, all right, I, I really need to bring Zapdos. I really need to bring something that doesn't lose to Gyar in the third game. This can't happen again. But I think that nothing that's happened so far should affect the decisions from either guy. Let's find out. Not too much of a delay. Here is the third and presumably final game between Jirachi and Johnny G2, fighting for that so important, so helpful spot in the winner's bracket, 2-0, with the bye in round three, as they watch other people eliminate themselves. Johnny's team already pretty clear, some kind of Superman squad leading Molt. Gonna be Skarmory, a ghost, and... Skarmory, ghost, Titar in the back, or Skarmory, ghost... There might not even be a special wall, or there might not be a ghost. It could be, or there might not be a T-Tar. It's, it's three of those four. It's going to be Skarmory, Ghost, Special Wall, T-Tar for Johnny. Three of those four, whichever one he decides he can live without the most in the back for Johnny. For Jirachi, you know what? It's much less clear. A lead Zapdos could be just about fucking anything. And a rest does get off. For the Zapdos of Johnny G2. Who do you guys think is going to win this series? Let me just get on my phone and take a quick peek at the predictions. Let's see. What did you guys think? Oh, man. Not even close. 53 votes versus 13 votes. You guys overwhelmingly think that Johnny's going to win this series. Maybe not like that. This Duck Trio, if he's not immediately crit or frozen, is going to remove Blissey. No crit, no freeze. Blissey is out of here. Very good start for Jirachi in this game three. Johnny gets himself zap dugged. And there's the Skarm and the special wall that we discussed. So it is simply going to be Last Poke Tar or Last Poke Ghost. And I say ghost because up until a year at most ago, ghost just meant Gengar. It was just a code word for Gengar. Everything else was extinct. But there is a niche, and it doesn't happen super often, but sometimes Mystery Bus these days is used in ADV. And it is bulkier than Gengar. It's none of that stuff. All right, that was not what I was expecting it to be. It's none of the things. It's not a T-Tar. It's not a Ghost. Kind of surprised that it's meta. But meta's always a good poke. And Dugtrio's going to fodder itself. So 
here we are. Five to five, no blissy, one spike. See what we can do here. Rachi's team this game looks similar to Johnny's team last game. Not that this archetype is patented by anybody or something that everybody doesn't have. Just standardish ADV stuff. Meta is gaining lefties, so no pinch berry or lum or funny business or what have you. Kuhn, of course, is faster. You see it gaining those lefties first. And there is CM and Earthquake, which is 35% unboosted. So this is some kind of offensive Kuhn for sure. Surf does a lot. I don't know. I'm surprised. I mean, Johnny must know that he wasn't going to... I'm surprised that he didn't just explode on it, but he might have been afraid of exploding into a bad target. He's banking here that the Moltres is faster, which it's going to be in the overwhelming majority of cases, and it's confirmed here by the sand that it is faster, so he feels comfortable that he can just come in, outspeed it, HP grass it down, and all is good. So he does go for the HP grass. I'm surprised he doesn't go for, like, Fire Blast there, which, granted, could have missed, but, like... If it hits the Kuhn, it kills, and it would have done way more there to Zapdos than the HP Grass. So I, I personally would have flamethrowered or fire blasted or overheated or whatever he's got there. But Johnny sees it differently, and it leaves us in a 4-5 to five situation with two unrevealed on the back for the Rachi. Uh, the Rachi. There could be a Rachi, but for Jirachi. And the Kuhn will die to Spikes plus Sand when it comes back. So we're effectively at a 4-4, four to four, pending a Rapid Spinner in the back for Jirachi, which there could be. So now Flygon comes in on T-Bolt. And there is a Rapid Spinner in the back. Here's Claydol, which is a common partner for Suicune, so I'm not overly surprised. There's no Ghost for Johnny, so Rapid Spin here is free. The worst thing that could happen is Toxic, HP Bug, something to that effect, but... You click Rapid Spin 100 times out of 100 here. Clearly the play for Jirachi. Johnny cannot be thrilled about that. He can't even reestablish the spikes with the Skarmory down. There's just nothing he can do. Toxic is the best thing he can do, and that's probably the play at this point. But that Rapid Spin happens, and Johnny is going to have to play the rest of this match spikeless. Here's Zapdos coming in. And the Coon is coming in twice. Good stuff. I really don't want to refresh again in the middle of Game 3, but if we start getting funky glitches like telling us that it was Magneton lead, I may just have to do that. Yeah, the Coon now pending a... I believe we saw Sleep Talk, and we did. But pending a Sleep Talk Thunderbolt, Coon's in shape here, and he's going to outspeed and kill the Zapdos with Surf. Things are unraveling here for Johnny, but as has been the case a couple times in this series, if it is a Jilla meta in the back, it might just clean up. It is such a good poke. Man, last year when I was building a bunch, I had such a hard-on for a Jilla meta. The thing is so good. I was using it in like 75% of my teams, and it just, no matter what was around it, spikes, no spikes, sand, no sand, it just didn't matter. It was always so good. Agilimata is awesome. Metagross is so good. Jirachi in the think tank here. He knows he's outsped, and he knows his HP grass on the other side. And he lets it happen. So there it goes, and the coon's down. And like I said, I think that was a non-rest coon. I think that was an offensive coon. So there's no point preserving it, trying to heal it up. I don't think he had that option. Non-rest from my estimation. Flygon comes into Toxic. If it had been HP Ice Zapdos, then I think the Zapdos is a huge problem for Johnny. But he seems to be HP Grass. He does still land Toxic on Flygon, which matters. And now he has to figure out how he wants to answer meta. He decides that his Poison Claydol is going to be the answer here. And Claydol seems to be faster than meta. Goes for Earthquake and whiffs, but there is the possibility of Explosion, which of course Johnny can just switch the meta into. So the mind game aspect of Pokemon certainly coming into play here. Could be really good to boom on the Flygon or the Moltres. Would be not so good. 
to boom on the Metagross, especially when you don't have a Dugtrio follow-up anymore, but he could follow up with a Zapdos, so maybe, maybe if, even if Johnny knows that the boom is coming, maybe even then Johnny doesn't want the Metagross to be the recipient. It might be his key to victory here. And there's a big overheat. Overheat is so good on Moltres. I'm really a fan. I think most Moltres should carry overheat. It's so useful. And that's a great example why. Flamethrower Fire Blast would not have been enough there. Overheat would be. Comes in clutch and nails the clay doll there. And it leaves us in a 3-3. Three three. But let's not forget the elephant in the room here that... Jirachi has not shown his last poke, and obviously what that poke is, is going to have a huge impact on this match. HP Grass coming down here on Flygon, still poison from before, 64% after the damage on the poison. Zapdos is faster, according to the lefty's recovery, but he can't kill Flygon without both a good roll and a critical hit. Checking in on the T-Tar here. It's at 88%. Has shown only Rock Slide and not Lefties. So maybe a Lumberry. And then on the other side, Moltres at a Hundo. And Meta not so healthy at 52%. We've got another close one. All three games have been close. Really good series. Enjoyable to watch live. Having fun with this one. I'm still not clear who wins this game. What is the last for Mr. Jirachi? BP. There it is. It is Jirachi for Jirachi. That's not confusing. Makes sense, though. Now, the Rock Resist, something that would appreciate Blissey gone or other Jirachis gone or things that get removed by your own Zapdug combo. I think it makes sense here. Now, obviously, every Mon from Johnny's team can threaten the Jirachi, and Jirachi knows this, which is why he's been hesitant to bring that in up to this point. But yeah, whether it's Overheat, whether it's Earthquake from the other two, everything threatens the Jirachi. And there's a great double from Johnny. Prompts the Fire Punch and doubles the Moltres in. Now something has to switch into Overheat, and nobody's going to like it. But Titar is the best case scenario. That just comes into hidden power. Moltres might get there. Moltres might win the day for Johnny. There does not appear to be good switch-ins. Johnny can threaten it offensively, but uh, nothing wants to come into it defensively. Zapdos can scare it away, but every time Moltres sneaks in, it just it fires off attacks that Jirachi doesn't have a good answer for. That being said, something's going to have to give on this turn as well. Moltres would not survive Thunderbolt. Metagross would not survive two Thunderbolts. And then, obviously, Flygon would survive a Thunderbolt, but he'd have to come in while poisoned. He could eat a Hidden Power plus one turn of poison, so there is that. But obviously, if he goes to Flygon, gets out-predicted, and eats a Hidden Power, then it's not so hot. But Johnny makes the play anyway. Gotta do what you gotta do. And Rachi not able to click Hidden Power there. Now it's just a mind game. Do you Earthquake into the Rachi or do you Rock Slide into the Zapdos? Obviously you don't want to EQ into Zapdos or Rock Slide into Rachi, especially while you're suffering from Poison. He could also double back, but that's risky. If Jirachi has the balls to stay in, and he has demonstrated the balls to stay in multiple times in this series, and just click Thunderbolt, anything Johnny doubles to is going to be having a bad day. These are the turns. These are the moments that determine if you win or lose matches and win or lose tournaments. This is anybody's late game. It is just going to come down to who plays better. Who reads the other guy better. Johnny stays in for the rock slide. Baton pass to, well, the only thing he can baton pass to. Rachi resists it, but it's another mind game turn. Do you stay in and eat an earthquake? Is Johnny going to stay in? It's all mental at this point. We could see a Moltres switch from Johnny. Little scary. If it's Calm Mind Wish Psychic Fire Punch, it's not a huge threat to the Moltres. Psychic would do more than nothing, but it definitely can't kill him from 86%. 
Moltres feels like a safe play from Johnny, but of course there's a possibility if he goes to Moltres that Rachi doubles back to Zapdos. It's all mental at this point. Gotta earn it, guys. This is how you win matches. This is how you win tournaments. You want to win Callus Invitational. You want to win that prize pool. You've got to play better than your opponent in these situations. Combine Earthquake. Ouch. 79% that did. Now it leaves the Flygon vulnerable to Psychic, and down it goes. So he's banking here that Moltres is either faster or it would survive Psychic. It's not faster, but it does survive. There's Flamethrower for the kill. And now the way this is going to play out is Jirachi is going to need a critical hit or a para full para. Down that goes. Here it is. Para full para. Meteor, ma me Meteor Mash miss. Crit. Any of those get him out of it. Thunderbolt. No crit. No para. But Mash connects. He survives at 2%. And Johnny clutches it out. But obviously, obviously, obviously. Obviously, that could have gone either way. What a remarkably close late game. Thunderbolt crit, powerful power, or Meteor Mash miss. Any of those bail him out of that situation. Not to mention that entire late game was all mental, was all mind games. Obviously, different plays could have been made, and the whole thing could have gone either way. This game three was fantastic. One of the best and closest games of the tournaments of the tournament to cap off what was, as a whole, an exciting, very close series. One of the best of the tournaments so far. But what you guys predicted has come to pass. Johnny G2 barely gets the victory over Jirachi. He's 2-0. He's in the winner's bracket. He's got the bye next round. And Jirachi, who's looked really good all tournament long, is going to go down to that lower bracket. What a great set this was, especially the third game. Really tight late game. Really enjoyed this one, especially live. And I hope you guys did as well. Good sportsmanship from both. Two really good guys that I'm fond of. Hope you enjoyed it. Lots more to come. Hit that like button if you haven't already. See you guys in the next battle.